Hey guys. Yes. Mm. When was the last time you gave someone ten grand and no questions were asked? This well, morning. well, this morning. No, that's true. <laughs> that's true. Because if you've got a full-time job, there's a good chance you're giving away almost that much money every single year to your boss. Because of people like. Hey guys, I'm just uh, heading off for the day. I've got this work-life balance seminar. Yeah, See sure, you. no problem. Now, we really need to ban the use of the term work-life balance in this office. I don't want people thinking their lives are important. If you're working a cushy 9 to 5, 40 hour a week job, lucky you. Because the average Aussie full-timer is clocking up six hours of unpaid overtime every week. Effectively giving their boss almost $10,000 of free work over the year. I'd like those dollars. As a minimum, you're doing... Half an hour to an hour every day. You've got to kind of be uh, putting those hard yards in if you want to keep progressing. Stress, anxiety, depression. We know these are the risks for, the, for working long hours. But clawing back some of those hours isn't easy. More than one third of workers anxiously believe that achieving work-life balance will harm their career prospects. People are afraid to rock the boat and say there's um, some difficulties around doing the expectations that, uh, that the management has. Concerningly, more than half of the 3.4 million Aussies who did improve their life balance in the last five years only managed to achieve it through changing their job. I think it's really sad that people would leave and they don't think they can actually go to their boss and ask for uh, you know, more flexible working hours. Now today is go home on time day, but how many people actually walked out the door on the dot? If I left on time today, I'd have to long day tomorrow. Unlikely, I'd probably work out at 5 o'clock today, probably maybe 6 o'clock. That probably wouldn't be overly acceptable. So why are Aussie workers so wobbly when it comes to work-life balance? And are our bosses to blame? The Australia Institute's Richard Dennis is the economics whiz who researched all the stuff we just heard. Richard, you run one of the country's leading think tanks. Surely you didn't get where you are by going home on time. <laughs> oh, look, and I won't get home on time today either. But, look, it's about, uh, it's about getting the balance right. It's about being clear with yourself, with your colleagues, with your families. It's not national nine to five day. It's go home on time. And that means different things to different people. But we all have to talk about it. Have we kind of ruined it for you by keeping you in a television studio well after 6.30 at night? <laughs> uh, look, I was expecting a bit, but uh, straight after here I'm off to the pub, so I can't complain. Awesome. That is some healthy work-life balance right there, my friend. Is it worrying that most people feel that they have to change their job to achieve work-life balance? I do think that's the, the, the most surprising and concerning finding. The whole purpose of Go Home on Time Day is to try and say, look, have a conversation with your colleagues, have a conversation with your boss, but sadly in a lot of workplaces it seems that's too difficult and it's easier to quit. And Richard, isn't part of the problem is even if you walk out the door at 5pm, you are still contactable by phone, by email. I mean, you used to be at the pub and you probably check an email, a work email, uh, even though you're trying to relax. That's right. I mean, technology is a double-edged sword here. For some people, it means they can leave the office a bit early, pick the kids up on their way home. They think it's a wonderful thing. For other people, they're stuck on the lounge at 7 o'clock at night answering emails. Um, some workplaces are now doing things like preventing emails being sent after 6 o'clock at night. So it's not as technology good or bad. It's, it's how do we use it. Richard, I think one of the biggest myths in many workplaces around the country is the fact that the person that works the longest hours is actually the most productive. We need to kind of rework our workplaces, don't we? It's all about working smarter, not harder. Absolutely. The idea that the person that leave, turns out the lights when they leave is the hardest working, most productive team member is a ridiculous. It's actually a toxic work culture when people want to impress each other or impress themselves by the hours they work. And good managers know that. Good managers reward people who get things done on time, not people who stick around forever. Well, Richard, we've kept you far too long as it is. Turn your phone <laughs> off, get out of here and get a beer, you crazy kid. <laughs> Can't wait. Thanks, You've earned it. Thank you. <laughs> Joke's on him. I'm going, to, I'm going to text him all night now. <laughs> Send him a couple of emails. Do you want to go home? Do you want to go yeah, home? Okay. Go See home? you later. Okay, cool. We've got to take a break. Uh, we'll be right back after this.